because we were playing to like the 20 of our favorite of our friends for like a couple years right we just played to just the same crowd that would come up and the the word got out and we finally got like a really good show with a bunch of people there and uh I just remember, you know, the stage was like a foot high and somehow all these kids knew the words and I was like right there s singing them and they were singing them and uh, I just remember driving home from that show thinking it was one of the coolest things I'd ever been a part of. This is Elliot from Little Pine People here. Today we're here with Sensefield and um, we're here in Philly, so let's do this. So, how's your day going? Pretty good. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going well so far. I'm glad I'm off the plane. That was, that was <laughs> kind of a long trip. Do you ever think about how many people's lives you impacted with your music? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can each of you tell me what you loved about John the most? I guess his, his uh, positive spirit. Yeah, enthusiasm for sure. John was like the, the most enthusiastic person I think I've ever met. Yeah. <laughs> By I, far, like not even close. <laughs> I think John brought kind of a goofy, I mean not a lot of people saw that, but he brought like a sense of humor and goofiness to kind of like when we were all together. Yeah. That doesn't exist without him. <clears throat> It's really sad and horrible <laughs> <laughs> when we hang out without John. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was just, uh, yeah, the most inspiring guy, you know. You don't know when you're a kid, you're 20, whatever, and you meet somebody and you figure, oh, I'm going to meet a bunch of people that are all that crazy into what they're doing or whatever. And, uh, and John it ends up, you know, he was one of the most intense, like, dedicated and he he could t he could make you think some band he was in was amazing and didn't even matter what they sounded like. He'd just be like, "We are gonna we are the shit," <laughs> you know. And you'd start to believe it. You were like, "Yeah, yeah, you guys are good." <laughs> like, so and he and then being in a band with him and he would say that about our band and I was like, "Yeah, we are. We're we're the we're great," you know. And uh, you know, because a lot of musicians are kind of humble or shy or we don't want to be like, "Oh yeah, we're the best thing ever." And, John just kind of broke through that and just he was like yeah let's just let's be into what we're doing you know believe in it have any of you seen John in your dreams since he passed away I haven't uh yeah yeah I, I actually <laughs> have I can't tell you what the dreams are now but there's I've had a few but you know you probably have yeah well I had the one right after he passed away where uh he uh he was super stoked about these memorial shows and he's like, man, we got to tell everybody, we got to get everybody to go to these shows. And, and then, you know, we were running around telling people and then, then I was like, oh, but dude, you're not, you can't sing there. Is it cool? Like all these other guys are going to sing for you. But you know how in dreams sometimes you, it doesn't, it's not really, doesn't make logical sense, but you're okay with it. And you just, 
So I was like, well, you can't be in it, but he was still happy and uh, super excited about it. And then, and then he got, he started getting tired in the dream and he kind of looked over at a bunch of people, his family and everybody, and he was like, you think they'll help me sleep this time? And I was like, yeah, they probably want you to be, a, you know, they want you to be at peace or whatever. And he said, all right. And he, he went back to sleep. <laughs> It was just a weird, I felt like he, I mean, I don't really believe in, you know, supernatural stuff or whatever, but it really felt like I was stressing out really bad about him passing away and it kind of felt like he came and he, he was just like, don't worry, man, it's going to be all right. We, you know, what happened happened and you're doing the right thing and you need to, you know, everybody needs to move on and carry on. But he was, but he was really stoked we were doing these shows for him. I just wish you could have seen him. You know, whatever, bottom line, whatever it was, it made me feel so much better the next day when I woke up. I was like, he came by and he said everything was okay, so I felt much better about everything. What do you think happens when you die? Do you think you'll reunite with your loved ones? Hmm, I hope so. Sure. Uh, I'm a little more cynical, I don't know. I'm going to think it all fades to black, but I want to believe that you go on. I guess I, I'm, I agree kind of with Chris, but what gives me uh, hope, or I don't know if it's hope, but you're not going to feel bad about it. Like, if you don't exist, like, I don't want to get all, you should chime in on this one. I don't think I should. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we're alive so, and we don't have any concept of what, what it is to be not alive. <clears throat> so when you're not alive, you don't regret not being alive. And, you know, it's like a, it's such a different world that you don't, uh, it's not going to matter either way. You could heaven or non-existence or whatever. You're not going to, you're not going to be regretting this life when you go, you know to the next world or, or if there is no world or whatever. Either way. Either way, don't worry about yeah. it. It doesn't make any, yeah, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> what if your spirit floats into like another animal and you turn into like some like other creature? That would be kind of awesome. <laughs> as long as it's not a rat. Right? Or a spider. Yeah. Something that can fly. <laughs> something that can fly. But yeah. how do you know an ant's life's no, but bad. I know but my daughter just steps on ants. <laughs> yeah, your life expectancy is not as good. <laughs> you, I bet ants don't worry much about things. They don't, though. but then it's over. <laughs> right. You guys have so many amazing songs. Which ones are your favorites? Hmm. I think a lot of these ones we're doing are, 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 were my favorites to play. I like the sing-alongs, like the ones that people's favorites, because those are so much fun to play live. But, uh, <clears throat> but I think a lot of the well, found you. I mean, just because everybody sings it, and uh, Leia, because uh, the "Don't Give Up, Don't Give In," John would always hold the mic out to the crowd, and all the kids would sing that one part. And I don't know. I like. I guess I like a lot of our songs. <laughs> I have to say, my favorite was "Save Yourself." We're gonna play that might have been John's right? favorite too. Yeah, because he wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because we wrote, me and Chris would write most of the basic songs, and then we never let John write songs. Well, we didn't really like a lot of his songs. <laughs> and the one song, one time we finally let him write a song, it ends up being the biggest song we've ever had. Like, <laughs> more people <laughs> listen to that than anything else we ever did. We're like, hmm. Maybe you should have let him write a few more. Huh? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, performing their song "Save Yourself" from the current CD tonight and forever. Please welcome Sexfield. <laughs> <laughs> How
Have you thought about making new music together while with a new singer? I think John, for me, just John just made this band. Like, he was such a big part of it. It's like, I can't really picture doing it with somebody else, you know, having some other singer. It wouldn't be really like sense feel without John, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It was those, <laughs> it always comes up. It was so distinctive. But, uh, he, yeah, his voice was just, that was sense feel, you know, like that. Like it or not, that was our sound. And, uh, yeah, I can't really picture it with a different person. <clears throat> Do you remember the last conversation you had with John? Hmm. I, I hadn't talked to him for a while, for maybe six months or a year, so I don't remember. I, I vaguely recall the last conversation. Was, he was actually pretty optimistic and excited. I think he was going on a trip right afterwards. Not really. I s- probably do. Yeah, I saw him at his birthday party, and uh, he talked about, he went to Peru, and he went, uh, what do you call that? Not snowboarding, but dune boarding, I guess. It's kind of similar, but you go down a big sand dune. And uh, he just had a lot of intense experiences in, in Peru on his vacation, and we talked a lot about that. And, and uh, I wanted to play him some of my new music at his party, and he was just all, nah. <laughs> it's my party. We're not listening to your stuff. And I'm like, right on, brother. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to add? Hmm. Nope. <laughs> no, sir. I'm, this is probably the last time we'll play music together. I'm looking forward to it. That is true. This is yeah. probably the last time. It feels, it feels right too, kind of, to, that it, you know, it'd be uh, maybe we'll do projects someday. Who who knows? But it kind of feels right that this is it. Like we're all gonna get together one last time for John. And, uh, this music wasn't. We're, we're getting too old to play it anymore. So it's like <laughs> at some point we have to stop trying too. So this is a good time yeah. for a good cause. I'm really sorry about your loss with your friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. That was good. <laughs>